Now this is one of those effects that once you to figure out how to do it, it actually you can actually get, occupy yourself for hours just trying it in different ways. And this is actually part of a tutorial I'd done in Photoshop User Magazine uh, a while back. And um, rather interesting use of filters in ways you probably didn't, didn't think of. And this, uh, I've actually done this on uh, Photoshop User TV as well. So what we're going to do is actually do some interesting brush effects, but take it that step further and see what we can do. So let's uh, first create a new, a new document here. This is the document we're ultimately going to create this effect in, but let's create a new document for the moment because I want it to be a perfect square document. So I'm going to go ahead and make it 5 by 5 inches at 100 pixels per inch. And let's go ahead and move this one out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and make the background black just by pressing Command or Control I, and that inverts the white background to black. Now what I want to do is go and add a lens flare. So go under the filter menu and go down here to render and choose lens flare. Now you have several choices, of course. The uh, most commonly used one is this uh, first one, the 50 to 300 millimeter. But I want to use this one down here at the very bottom called Movie Prime. And you can see it, um, I can actually move it around if I wanted to and it actually acts like a real flare. But we're just going to kind of keep it in the center for the most part here. And the brightness, I'm going to go ahead and leave at 100%, and we'll click OK. So there it is. So now I don't, know, I don't need the color um, in this particular flare, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that by simply pressing Shift-Command-U, it would be Shift-Control-U on Windows. And that just goes ahead and makes it black and white. Now I'm going to go into the Image menu to Adjustments and choose Invert. And that's going to flip the colors around, making the flare dark and the background uh, white, which is exactly what we want when we're defining a brush for this, because we're going to make a flare brush out of this. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab the gradient tool and make sure I'm using a linear gradient, and let's make sure we set the foreground color to white, because I am using a foreground to background, or, or rather foreground to transparent uh, gradient here. So I'm just going to draw a gradient in from the left side and again from the right side just to kind of get the right blend mode here. Just to kind of fade out that edge that goes to the um, uh, goes off the edge of the document there, I'm going to do a little bit to the top one and bottom one here as well. Just kind of give it a little bit of fade. That looks pretty good. Now I'm ready to define this um, graphic as a brush. Now I do not need to select anything because it's going to go ahead and ignore anything that's white. It'll only partially define gray areas, and then it will make the black areas the most opaque areas of the brush without making a selection. So simply go under the edit menu, go down here to define brush preset. Give it a name if you like. We'll call it flare. We'll call it movie prime flare, since that's what it's called. And click OK. Now that brush is defined. So let's go back into the document we created a moment ago, or created earlier. And I'm going to create a new blank layer. Now let's go over here into the toolbar and grab the brush tool should be located at the very bottom of the brush menu. When you click on the um, menu icon here and open up everything at the very bottom, scroll to the very bottom there, it should be the very last brush in there. So now, again, with white as my foreground color, if I just click and paint and drag, you can see it paints that flare and gives me a rather interesting effect. But it's just, you know, they're all the same size and all the same angle and the same distance apart. Don't, doesn't really make it all that interesting unless that's the effect I'm going for. But in this case, it is not. So we're going to go ahead here and change the behavior of the brush by simply clicking on the brush icon here in the options bar or simply go into the window menu and choose brush. But what we are going to do is first go into the brush tip shape section and just go over here down to the spacing and just increase the spacing a little bit. This is a little bit more distance between these. And then activate shape dynamics just below. Now you have several choices when you want this um, to behave a certain way. In fact, what I want it to do is vary the size of the graphic as I paint. Now I can do this by moving this slider. Um, zero, of course, has no effect on it. If I drag it all the way to 100%, then it will vary the size as I paint, regardless of what I do there. You can see like that. Now, I can also set it to pen pressure. If you are, in fact, using a pressure-sensitive tablet, then you can set this uh, control setting to pen pressure, and now the size will respond to how you press down on the tablet. I'm pressing very lightly, and it gives me very small flares. If I press harder, it gives me very, very large flares. So I can do it by pressure or by doing it manually with the settings in here. Uh, I tend to have different reasons for using either one, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the size jitter setting and push it all the way to 100%. 
So now what I can do is just go over here and I'm just going to paint and just generate a random field of flares. Now at this point, you could, you know, I could stop the tutorial here and you'd have a pretty good technique for creating an interesting flare brush. But why stop there? So what I'm going to do is actually take the brush I've created here and just kind of paint a field of flares right in the middle of the document. I'm careful not to go off the edge with the flares, like I don't want to put one over here, it kind of cuts off the edge there. Just kind of keep it in the middle of the document here. Again, on a new blank layer with this. And now what I'm going to do is warp this. I'm going to go ahead and put it in free transform by pressing command or control T. Let's go ahead and zoom out here so we have room in the outer pasteboard area. So again, command T puts it in free transform mode. Then I'm going to go under the edit menu or simply just right click or control click on the object itself. And when the pop-up menu comes up, go ahead and choose warp. Now, it's going to manually warp it. You'll see that the warp grid has shown up on the image now. What you can do is grab the control handles, of course, or just click anywhere inside the grid and move the uh, graphic around to distort it. So I'm just going to do this and just try it. And there's no formula here. It's just a matter of pushing this thing around and doing something until it looks somewhat interesting. But can't fully see what it's going to look like because sometimes things will overlap. So we just kind of got to go on a little bit of faith here, but I'm just going to distort this a little bit more so we get a little bit more of a interesting result here. So I could obviously play around a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and press enter and it commits the change. And there you can see I've got a rather interesting element going on here that could be used as an abstract background design element. In fact, I could go ahead and put a new layer over the background layer. Let's grab the gradient tool and get Everybody knows I'm partial to blue. Let's do something different and try purple, actually. So I just take the radial gradient, again, foreground the transparent, and just add a couple of gradients in the background here. And what I've got, I actually do not want to do it on the layer that contains the element. There we go. So, so just adding some background elements here. Now if I go back to that layer containing the graphic piece, I'm just going to go ahead and change it to overlay. And if I make a couple of duplicates by pressing command J a couple of times, you can see I've got somewhat interesting graphic that blends in with that background. I'm going to add more, more color here. There we go. But now I'm getting something that really started with nothing, really just started with a flare and then defining it as a brush and then warping it this way. You're, you're taking it a level deeper each time, ultimately um, giving you something that's um, really, really interesting that you can use for whatever. In fact, I'm going to use um, some more flares of those same flares on a new layer and just kind of enhance the positioning of these flares here. Just dabbing in a few little flares there and you can ultimately finish this by adding just a little bit of a text element, just kind of balance it right there. But you can see with just a little bit of experimentation and how I got to this was just going blindly in the Photoshop, defining that flare as a brush and then just trying different things. I tried other warp filters and distortion filters that didn't seem to work. Ultimately playing around with the manual warping gives you some rather interesting things you can do with this. Now one thing, one little bonus thing we did, I, I did warp this and it actually get, yielded something rather interesting here, but here's another trick. Let's go back to the original element here. Now here's another interesting thing. I'm going to position this right about, just kind of position it anywhere really, because you really got to start somewhere. So I'm just going to position it right about here. I'm going to press Option Command T and that's going to invoke the step and repeat, which is uh, one of those gems of a hidden feature inside Photoshop. So I'm going to actually take the center uh, mark right here, the center target, just grab it and position it somewhere, maybe you're like right about here. And then I'm going to rotate the object, just going to click and drag to rotate the object. You'll notice it creates a duplicate because we are in that step and repeat mode. I'm going to position it right about there and press enter. Now I'm going to press shift option command and then press T over and over. I'm just pressing T over and over and over again and that gives me this kind of spiral effect with that graphic element. Now notice it created a new layer for each repeat here in the layers panel, but that's no problem. Let's go back and select all those layers and merge them back down to one layer. So now we have this giant spiral element that we can blend, reposition, put in a background. I can just maybe change the blend mode here again to overlay. 
make myself a duplicate or two and can do so many different things with it. So starting with a simple flare, going in and creating a brush, then warping it, then going in and doing some step and repeating. So each one of these things can yield something very interesting by starting with a very abstract element. Pretty cool stuff.